Okay, so Pi News episode 33, and I'm starting off in FidoS. Let's just log in. And I'm using this because um, FidoS, I did a video on quite a while ago now, and it is a really good operating system on the Pi. And this particular version supports Android apps as well. And uh, it's actually got quite reasonable gaming performance with the Pi. And even GTA San Andreas works, and various other different Android apps work as well. Really like it. Uh, but after a while, when it's been on, you get a notification. So what I'll do is do the next story and see if the notification comes up. So I'm pleased to announce I've got 50,000 subscribers. Uh, they came a lot quicker more recently, uh, and that's thanks in part to a shout out from ETA Prime, uh, who shouted me out on a Windows 11 video. And uh, also, I've been linked in various different stories. So I had a chat with Les from Tom's Hardware and uh, helped him on a drive for his Windows 11 installation and uh, he thanked me and he put a link to my channel which I was really pleased about here we go so that links to my channel and there was also stories that mentioned my channel on Tech Radar uh, so multiple testers have posted videos so if I click on that that it goes direct to my installation video for Windows 11 and also got mentioned in this article from PC Gamer so definitely helped my subscribers it definitely went up quite a bit all in one go so I was really pleased about that and thanks to everybody who subscribed. So back to FidoS. So I did this video back in January 2021 and I was really impressed with it. It is a great operating system. But I used this FidoS for my recent Raspad video and uh, I wanted to try it out because I thought it would be great as a tablet operating system. And all the links, the download links are in here. But it doesn't mention any anything on here about money. But if I go to direct download, I think it just, yeah, it just downloads the file. Uh, so I've been getting these notifications and they're not going to come up now. So about 10 minutes later, uh, I had a message pop up and if I click on it here, uh, you can see, uh, well, 12 minutes ago, uh, important information, apologies, your subscription has ended. Your current FidoS session will be signed out in 129 seconds. I haven't paid for it. Um, if I click on it, what happens is it comes up with this annual subscription of 12.99. Uh, the reason I haven't paid for it is because I haven't really used it a lot, even though it does work really well, the Android compatibility is great, uh, it's played GTA San Andreas better than anything else I've had on the Pi. So I do like it, but uh, I just I didn't know how legitimate this is. So if you type in is Chromium OS free, Chromium OS is free and open source operating system designed for running web applications and browsing the World Wide Web. Now FIDE OS is obviously uh, a fork of it, so maybe they can charge for it. I, I don't know the situation, so I'm not saying they can or they can't. But uh, as I haven't used it loads uh, in recent times, because the Pi has got so many free open source operating systems, I kind of I'm, I'm maybe going to look for some sort of alternative. But uh, what made this special was the integration of the Google Play Store uh, and the fact that you can use Android apps. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've paid for it and uh, if, if you found that it's working well for you. There is a newer version on there. Uh, there's a Service Pack 2 version. And the version I had, I checked in my video, wasn't Service Pack 2. So fix USB cameras unable to work. Uh, optimize OOBE UI to encourage installation upon first boot to enable over the air update. So maybe I would have, if I'd have had that service pack too, maybe it would have warned me more uh, about the payment bit. I do remember when I released the video that some people had, had mentioned something about payment. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments uh, if you've paid for it, if it's a system that you use regularly, because I do like it as an operating system, but I don't really use it enough to for me to pay for it. And as I say, I'm going to look, see if there's an, uh, a free alternative that I can put on there. And next up, Twister OS, my favorite operating system on the Pi, uh, has just had an update. And thanks to Football Tech, Sean Doyle, and also Pradyot Pachor for letting me know in the comments. I always appreciate it when people let me know about new things on the Pi. Uh, so if we have a look at the Twister OS page, and if we go to the download section, you can see there's a change log here. So version 2.1.0 added Twister 11 themes, moved Box 86 and Wine shortcuts from games to system, updated Discord app. Thanks to Phoenix Bird for his work on the dock and theme Twister GUI apps. So let's have a look at it. This is the Windows 95 theme, uh, which really does look cool. Uh, it's very, very nice the way all the icons are and the folders and everything like that. But if we go to theme Twister, I've already updated mine. Hit next. 
and you can see all the themes are here. So Twister 11 is the new one. Uh, so we've got light and dark. So if I go to light, this is what I've been used to using because I've been using the insider version of Windows 11 on my Pi. Here we go. So login looks the same. And you can see that it looks great. Uh, it's very authentic looking. Got the Twister logo down the bottom here. Also, if I press the Windows key, it comes up with the with the window style menu. So if I type in imager, you can see lovely big tiles. I think this is going to be very good on a tablet. So like the Raspad 3 that I've been doing videos on recently, and there's a bit on the Raspad later in this video. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a really nice, easy to use operating system. Everything's easy to find. I love what they've done with the folders, which is basically to color the various different folders, just like in Windows 11. Uh, and all of this just works really, really nicely. There's nothing in these folders. There you go. But uh, yeah, great work by the Twister OS team. Uh, it's uh, it's great to see updates so regular, and it's all so seamless. You just go to the, well, if I, if I type the Windows key and type in update, uh, you can see that Twister OS patcher comes up. You just click on that and it will apply the latest update. Okay, so next up I had a notification telling me that there's a new version of Pinout. Uh, so PinOS is a multi-boot system. I've got several videos on Pin. It is great. Uh, and if we have a look at the README, so this is version 3.6. Uh, so updated firmware and Wi-Fi to match Noobs 3.6. I hadn't realized that Noobs was properly still being developed. I thought they'd switched over to Raspberry Pi OS, but nice to see it's still going. Uh, updated Italian translation, fixed pin init.sh for USB boots, added option for manual SSD provisioning, maintain network settings during run installer, and manual check for pin upgrade removes ignore flag. So it says here 3.6 is the latest release, but over this side it's only got information on 3.0, so I don't know what the change is, maybe someone who Maybe someone can note in the comments what the changes are to 3.6, but it's nice to see everything being updated. So Magpie Magazine did this story recently, Raspberry Pi Re, and as you can see, it's uh, GPIO out to a breadboard, and uh, it's got like a plastic attachment on it as well. But what the maker has done has, uh, they've spread it out a lot, so if you're, if you're plugging things in, you've got a lot more space and everything's named and things like that, but you can see the board here that attaches underneath the Pi 400, and you can see how it's all attached underneath there, all the soldering and everything. Next one up on Hacker Day, I like this one. Uh, so this is a Pi Pico powered ATX motherboard. Now the Pico is uh, a very small, tiny little board, uh, not really an SBC on its own. It needs all the other bits to go with it. But as you can see here, it looks like an old sort of PC motherboard. And uh, this was a story a while ago and I added it into the Pi News. But more recently, Tom's Hardware did one uh, on the same board, Raspberry Pi Pico Micro ATX motherboard passes first test. So there is actually a physical unit. Uh, and obviously this is very low powered. So it says here there's no official case or accessories for the final build. That's up to the maker to choose. What this board provides is a base for creating a Raspberry Pi Pico desktop computer with a micro ATX form factor. And you can see we've got the PS2 connectors for the mouse and keyboard. Uh, we've got the analog connectors here, VGA connectors. Yeah, a cool project. It'll be interesting to see what make, people make out of that. Next, another Tom's Hardware story, and this is an iMac, so 2004 iMac. Uh, and what's interesting is what he's got working. Here's the original tweet. My Pi Mac project edges towards completion. Power button, sound, and camera all working. Great to see the camera working on there. And you can see here, look, did use the original screen. It's the original screen, a Samsung panel. You can get controller units on eBay for about £30, which give you HDMI input. Also says here, got the original remote working too. But they're good screens on those iMacs. I've got a 2010 MacBook, and uh, even that's got a very good display on it. So that would be nice to see. Next one is a cool story. Uh, this is by Hackaday again, and uh, a custom Raspberry Pi spotted in the wild. And basically this, uh, you can see that it looks like a Raspberry Pi 3, but there's no Pi logo on it and it's been modified, so uh, they've changed. Uh, so there's no Pi logo on the underside, there's an EMMC in place of the SD socket, and one pair of USB sockets has been replaced by a USB socket and a header. And it turns out it's from 2015, and uh, a customization service for industrial customers. So this was used in a washing machine. So yeah, really good story, really good spot. So I did a video on the Raspad the other day, and I really do like it. I've been playing around with it, and there's loads more I wanna do with it as well. Um, now, one mod I've done, very impressive mod, this piece of sellotape. 
uh, and this is to remind me to take the SD card out because uh, this device uh, snaps SD cards in half <laughs> or can do. So let's just turn it off first of all. So if I flip this card out, because I want to put this in Twister uh, because there's a modification I've done to my Raspad that I wanted to show you all. Okay, so I've taken the screw out, so let's take this off. And you'll see that it's a bit different now because there is no uh, cable going from here to the fan and I've taken that fan out because I've replaced it with the PWM heatsink fan, uh, which I've got a separate video on. But uh, this is obviously a more substantial heatsink than the ones that come supplied. Uh, but also this is a PWM controlled fan, so it's controlled by temperature and uh, loads of operating system support it. I've shown that in another video um, and it's all connected up. But you can also set it at what temperature it comes in at. So it's currently set at 60 degrees, but really I would probably put it up to more like 70 or 80 degrees. The other thing that some people have been asked about is M.2. And yeah, M.2 definitely would fit. Uh, this is my M.2 drive. I don't particularly like this cable. It's not as uh, compatible as the Argon case, but the Argon case, actually the Argon case would probably fit in here, uh, but I use that separately anyway. So what I did before was unplugged this ethernet cable, plugged the USB 3 in, and then routed that around the back of this ethernet. And I was just using the ethernet plug to keep it in place uh, and then this goes across the board and you can see there's definitely enough room here. I could cable tie this to here or hot glue it in place um, and that would be enough space for that drive. But the one thing that stops you doing that is this pillar. Uh, you can see this central pillar goes right down through the center uh, and attaches to uh, basically the screen or the rest of the device and that's what stops it. So if I was to put that on there, that would go straight through the middle here. So if I move this out the way, you can see that that is in place and that's where that pillar would stand. But uh, there's nothing to say that you couldn't remove this pillar. Uh, it would come out pretty easily, it's just plastic. And you've still got the four corners that would hold the screws in place and it still feels nice and solid without that one done up. So I think that would be the way to do it if you're desperate to put an M.2 drive in there. I'm not too worried. As a portable device, I'm fine with a fast micro SD card, so something like the uh, Extreme Pro, uh, or like I showed in my other video, I've got uh, a Samsung bar which runs an operating system pretty swiftly, faster than most SD cards, certainly in my tests. But uh, yeah, so M.2 definitely does fit, but you want to be looking for a slightly more compatible one than this. Uh, maybe the Argon one would fit, because as I showed in my other video, this board, which is pretty slim, in fact, well, with the adapter, no, that's going to be too big. Yeah, that would be a more tricky one to fit in, but these are really compatible. I really do like this board since I've had it. Right, so let's pop my micro SD card into Twister OS, and I'll just apply the changes to basically make this fan come on and off at the right temperature. So let's pop it in my Pi 4. So let's have a look first of all uh, what the settings are on this. So if we go into the boot partition, config.txt, because I would imagine I must be overclocked. Yeah, so I'm at 2200 uh, arm frequency, over voltage of eight, GPU frequency of 750. Right, okay, that's all fine. So now I need to boot this operating system, uh, which is Raspberry Pi OS. So let's shut that down. Okay, so let's open a terminal and do sudo raspi-config and performance options, fan. Would you like to enable fan temperature control? Yes. So the GPIO it's connected to is 14. I've covered this in my video for the adapter. And then the uh, what degrees do you want it to turn on? So at the moment I've got it set it to 60 degrees and I'll do that because you'll be able to hear the fan come on. So let's finish that and that will reboot. And let's pop this back together. So I'm, just, I'm only going to use one screw uh, because it seems to hold itself together enough with that. Pop the SD card in, upside down. And switch on. And we might hear the fan initially. 
No, not even initially. There's no fan noise at the start. Uh, so this is set to 60, so it shouldn't do much um, unless we start browsing videos or things like that. So it makes a huge difference, this tablet being silent. And obviously 2200 is quite a decent overclock, so you don't need to do that necessarily. So you can see temperature 41, 42 degrees, but we can change all that because all we have to do is open up a web browser. So let's open up Chromium and go to YouTube. You can see the temperature already ramping up. Uh, even with that heat sink on, uh, so videos, but then it is running at 2200, it is over -volted as well, uh, and let's just pick, uh, let's go with that one there, Fifty-seven. nearly there, and let's go, what resolution is it in at the moment? 480, so let's pop it up to 720. The resolution is only 800 on this screen, so uh, it won't go any higher than that. Let's go full screen. And the fans just come on. If I get it near my mic. But this fan is a nicer fan noise. Uh, it's definitely quieter than the one that comes with the Raspad. And uh, yeah, it's it's not very noisy at all. And remember, this is when it's at 60. Uh, so if we had it set to 75, 80, then it wouldn't be coming on at all now. So we'd still be able to watch videos, do all sorts of things without any need for the fan. So definitely a good upgrade for the Raspad 3. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.